Welcome to my channel. Today I will share Sam's story. His wife cheated on him. Please subscribe to our channel before we begin with the story. My name is Sam, and I am 28 years old. Ever since my divorce from my wife two years ago, I have been struggling. I quit my stable job at the bank and started a small pet shop to get by. Just as I thought my life would continue aimlessly, an unexpected package completely changed everything for me. It was a daring photo album. The moment I opened it, I turned red in embarrassment. A woman was bound to a chair with a black cloth, forming an M shape, provoking inappropriate thoughts. But as I looked at her face, my heart skipped a beat. How could she look so much like my ex-wife, Alice Akama? I glanced down at her ankles, and the red birthmark confirmed my suspicion. My ex-wife involved in this line of work? What had she gone through these two years? I couldn't comprehend it. I tore up the photos, feeling drained on the sofa. Three hours passed before I finally regained my senses. I was in a relationship with my ex-wife for five years, married for two. During this time, our bond was strong, and even our arguments were few. Yet today, I still couldn't understand why she insisted on divorcing me. It happened three years ago, when I was sent on a two-month training assignment by my company. Upon my return, my wife's attitude changed drastically. Not only did she refuse to be intimate with me, but she also threw my belongings out of the house multiple times. I tried to talk to her, but she avoided seeing me altogether. Desperate. I visited her workplace daily, but she eventually quit her job, drawing a clear line between us. Two months later, I reluctantly agreed to the divorce. My ex-wife vanished from my life on the same day she got the divorce papers. I stared at the torn pictures, still able to see the agonized expression on my ex-wife's face, filling my heart with bitterness. I couldn't comprehend how someone as gentle and kind as her could end up in this line of work. Even if she needed money, why would she degrade herself like this? During the divorce, I left her with the car and the savings in the garage, worth nearly two million. Where could that money have gone? I noticed a note taped to a slightly worn hotel room keycard inside the package. Thursday at 3 colon 30 p. M. Room 301, Palm Hotel on Queens Avenue. I'm waiting for you my chest tightened, feeling as if I had been struck hard in the heart. The woman I loved deeply had fallen so low, and thousands of silver needles seemed to pierce me. That night, I couldn't sleep. Despite my hesitation, I decided to visit the hotel. I wanted to know why she was doing this to herself, comma, when I stood before the hotel, I faltered. It had been two years, and I had no idea how she had changed. After a moment of hesitation, I didn't swipe the card but softly knocked. The door opened quickly. A woman in revealing attire rushed towards me, passionately kissing my lips. The unfamiliar taste made my heart skip a beat, and I quickly pushed her away. Irritated, I wiped my mouth and asked, Who are you? Where's Alice? The woman chuckled. Alice? She's quite famous here. I assume she's currently with a big boss I inquired when my ex-wife would return. She leaned closer with a boneless touch, rubbing me aimlessly. Her soft lips grazed my ear. I don't know when she'll be back, but once we're done here, she'll surely return. As she whispered, a wicked impulse surged through me. Before I could react, I caught a familiar figure in the corner of my eye. My ex-wife, comma, startled, I quickly pushed the woman away and focused on Alice being embraced by another man, sharing a cozy moment together. As my ex-wife noticed me, she walked over, puzzled briefly before greeting me. Sam, you actually came? I glared at her. Two years had passed, yet time had left no marks on her face, appearing even more delicate and charming. Filled with anger, 
I hoarsely shouted at her, Alice, are you out of your mind? What are you doing? Anxious, she hushed me, ushered the woman away, then led me into a room, closing the door with a bang. The world fell silent, but my heart couldn't find peace. She wore a sexy red dress, revealing long, fair legs accentuated by black heels, emphasizing her feminine allure. The innocent image was gone, replaced by a world-weary look. This was my initial thought. She, a graduate of a prestigious school, now stooped to such means to make a living. What was her motive? I clenched my fists, trying to keep my voice calm. You insist on divorcing me, just to sell yourself? Alice. Where did all those things I left you go? Two million. Don't tell me you spent it all in less than two years. My ex-wife hesitated before casually smiling, once the money is mine, it's mine. What right do you have to be angry, comma, her response felt like a punch in the air. Holding back my frustration, I spoke sharply. Your parents, if they knew, they'd be heartbroken. Unfazed, my ex-wife lit a cigarette and looked out the window. I invited you here today to discuss something else. Showing me her phone gallery, it revealed a child's face. I found out I was pregnant right after the divorce, didn't terminate it, and this is your son, comma, the bombshell news left me stunned. The child indeed looked identical to me. She urged me to consider a paternity test if I doubted her words. As she went on about our son, I sat on the bed, bewildered and speechless. Sensing my confusion, my ex-wife continued, My mom isn't well and needs to stay with my brother. I have little time to raise the child. You've quit your job and started a business, so I thought you could take the child. I'll provide you with 5,000 monthly as child support, comma, I stared at the note, feeling conflicted. If she bore the child, she must still have feelings for me. Yet, why did she abruptly divorce me and resort to such means? Was there a deeper reason behind her actions? As I became more and more excited, I grabbed my ex-wife's shoulders. Alice, are you facing any difficulties? Tell me, let's solve them together okay? My ex-wife hesitated, shaking off my hand. No difficulties. All of this was my own choice. You couldn't give me the life I wanted, so I divorced you, that's all, comma, I couldn't accept this reality and tearfully said, Alice, I don't believe you would become like this. You must have a reason, right? It was my fault before, but the child is innocent. Can you bear to let him grow up in a broken home? Tears welled up in her eyes. I thought she would be moved, but she pushed me out and refused to open the door no matter how I knocked. Later, I received a text from her, We're not possible, take the child when you have time. Eventually, I found my way to the address. When Alice's mother opened the door, we both fell into momentary silence. She then smiled warmly and invited me inside. A young boy played with toy cars in the living room. When he saw me, he didn't seem surprised but called out Daddy with excitement. My heart tightened at his words as I picked him up. The boy held onto my neck, embracing me gently. I overheard Alice's mother sigh heavily. He'd even pointed at your photos saying Daddy previously. The walls, projector, everything is filled with pictures of you. Even though my heart ached, I knew it wasn't logical. Taking a deep breath, she continued, when Alice decided on the divorce, we advised her against it but she refused to share the reason. Despite our old age, our proudest achievement was sending our daughter to a top university. She thought we were unaware of her actions, but how could we not know the truth about our own daughter? Her eyes filled with tears, and Tom, although a boy, was quiet and sensible. He timidly approached Alice's mother, wiping her tears away. Don't cry, Grandma, it's not pretty when you cry. His innocent words choked me with emotion. How could a once-happy family end up like this? 
Lost and bewildered, I left with Tom from Alice's mother's home, back to my own place. The sudden new presence of a child made it hard to believe it was real. I felt it was all a dream, that the divorce and the child were both unreal. I took the paternity test with Tom. Less than half a month later, the results confirmed that Tom was indeed my son. A few days without seeing his mom and grandma had left Tom restless. He demanded to see them. Worried about him, I didn't want him alone at home or at the store, fearing the cats and dogs might scare him. After much thought, I called my mom and explained everything about Tom's situation, though I omitted the details about my ex-wife's current life status. Despite this, it was a shock for both my parents. A three-hour journey, and my dad arrived in just two hours. Seeing Tom, my parents were stunned. He's so. So much like us, comma, my mom stared at Tom, muttering, in fact, the paternity test was unnecessary. The moment I laid eyes on Tom, I knew in my heart that he was mine. I only demanded the test because I didn't believe it. I couldn't fathom that my ex-wife, after our divorce, would willingly have a child for me. Tom hid behind me and timidly looked at my parents. I patted his back, encouraging him to get closer to my parents. However, Tom suddenly screamed and began crying hysterically, cursing and running around the house madly. You're all bad people, you took away mom and grandma. I want mom, I want mom. In his distress, he attempted to climb the sofa but tripped and hit his head on the coffee table with a loud thud comma, the impact left a large bump on his forehead, turning blue and purple. Tom cried inconsolably. We tried to comfort him all afternoon, but nothing seemed to work. By nightfall, he developed a high fever. We rushed him to the hospital, where we managed to soothe him to sleep. Upon waking, his first words were a cry for his mom. This presented a dilemma for me. My mom couldn't bear to watch Tom suffer and suggested, Sam, why don't you call the child's mom? Alice is a good girl. Regardless of any grievances between you, in times of trouble, she will surely come. I nodded, leaving the hospital room. After half a month, I mustered the courage to call my ex-wife. No response. Feeling uneasy, I called multiple times, but the calls went unanswered. Anxious, I hastily drove to the hotel where she had stayed. The receptionist sneered at me when I asked about my ex-wife. That promiscuous woman? She checked out a week ago. You're too late, my heart sank at that moment. I thought that having a child would mend the estranged relationship with my ex-wife. However, this revelation left me in shock. How could she be so heartless? What had transpired during those two months when I was away, leading my ex-wife to make such a resolute decision, comma, lost and bewildered? I returned to the hospital. My parents, seeing my state, guessed the situation. My mother sighed but remained silent, only comforting Tom. Fortunately, Tom's youth and a few days of rest brought him back to a more tranquil state, happily spending time with my parents. I thought my life would return to normalcy, but a week later, I received news from my ex-wife. It was a message with a 1 million yuan transfer confirmation and a cold property notarization document. The document stated that after her death, all her assets would be transferred to me. Her only request was for me to take good care of our son. The shocking news left me speechless. Where was my ex-wife? Why did she suddenly entrust the child to me? And why the sudden property notarization? She was less than 30, comma, fearful of what she might do. I immediately contacted the authorities. As time passed, my anxiety grew, and I sat in my car at Tua. M. On the verge of a breakdown. In a daze, I received an unexpected call. Hello? I muttered sleepily. 
A somber voice responded, Sam, I. I'm sorry, her familiar voice jolted me awake. Urgency washed over me, Alice, is that you? Where are you? Please don't do anything rash. Let's solve our problems together. Think of Tom, he's just two years old. Before I could finish, my ex-wife calmly continued, Sam, my life has lost its meaning. This call is my farewell to you. I've let you down in this life. All the things I've left you were my life savings. I beg you, take care of Tom and please don't hate me, her words brought tears to my eyes. I reassured her, Alice. Don't be impulsive. I don't hate you. Let's make things right, let's live a good life together. Comma, before I could finish my words, a heavy object falling on the other end of the line interrupted the conversation. The signal cut off abruptly. I was left dumbfounded. My hand trembled, causing the phone to crash to the floor, shattering into pieces. It couldn't be. Alice couldn't have met with any harm. I immediately dialed the police station's number again, utilizing all my connections, and within an hour, my police acquaintance called me. Sam, there was a death in the community, and it seems to be your ex-wife, Alice, comma, upon arriving at the scene, the community was cordoned off with a long police line. Curious residents gathered outside, craning their necks to catch a glimpse inside. The inner area was too congested to enter. I followed my classmate through the crowded crowd towards the crime scene. As we got closer, my heart began to tremble. I prayed countless times that the woman wasn't her. Unfortunately, when I saw the birthmark on the ankle revealed under the white cloth, the reality hit me my ex-wife had truly passed away. My mind went blank. My classmate patted my shoulder, offering condolences. I stood there in shock for a while, my mind racing. I wanted to seek justice for my ex-wife, I couldn't let her departure go unanswered. I begged, please make sure to investigate thoroughly and find the truth. She must have been murdered. She was so kind, I can't imagine who would harm her. My classmate lowered her voice, I inquired with the forensic team. And your ex-wife is confirmed to have committed suicide. I wanted to argue, but my classmate continued, we reviewed the surveillance footage. Your ex-wife's room had no other entries during the incident. We also found evidence of severe depression and suicidal tendencies in her diary entries, Come up, those words left me in silence. After a while, I realized something and asked, will this be the end of the matter? My classmate shook her head, not necessarily. The police will conduct a post-mortem investigation and determine the real cause of death based on the family's wishes. For instance, if there were signs of coercion or drug use before her death. I subconsciously pleaded with her again to uncover the truth. She hesitated before saying, Sam, you're divorced now, so you can't make decisions on this matter. Only her true family can. I was speechless, nodding in agreement. I called my ex-wife's mother to inquire if she was at the scene. To my surprise, her brother answered the call. He responded to my plea in a harsh tone, Our family affairs are none of your business. Stop prying where you shouldn't. Watch yourself, or I'll break your legs. With that, he hung up in a fit of rage. My classmate overheard the conversation and consoled me, saying, try again tomorrow. They must be going through a tough time, and I'm sure your ex-wife's family also wants justice for her. I reluctantly agreed, following her suggestion, and went home to rest. Unexpectedly, the next morning, my classmate hurriedly visited me. Sam. Your ex-wife's brother had her cremated at the funeral parlor yesterday. The news caught me off guard and left me feeling uneasy. Why was he rushing to cremate her? Why were her relatives not cooperating with the police investigation? 
I contemplated calling her brother to inquire about the situation before he called me first. Beginning with my questions, his response was accusatory, Sam, what about the inheritance my sister left you? She has a whole family to support. Did you keep those things for yourself? I retorted, isn't it you who's refusing the police investigation? Why the rush to bury her, David? Do you have something to hide? His abrupt outburst left me stunned. David cursed me over the phone, threatening me to return my ex-wife's assets, or else. Hearing his words chilled me to the core. With my ex-wife gone, it was unbelievable that her brother, who should have cared the most, was only concerned about her inheritance. What kind of family member was this? I scoffed, David, she's your own sister. She's no longer with us, and all you care about is your damn inheritance? Let me remind you, her will has been notarized, and I am the sole inheritor. With that attitude, I wouldn't give you a cent even if I donated or threw away the money. You can dream on. However, David's wife also lashed out at me over the phone, Oh, Sam, you're quite affectionate. Servicing that shameless woman must have made you feel good, right? You're defending her? Sam, you may not give us the inheritance, but watch out not to meet the same end as that bitch. Before she could finish, the call seemed to be abruptly terminated. I held onto the phone, feeling that something was off. What did it mean to meet a similar end as my ex-wife? She had just passed away, yet her family was eagerly focusing on fighting over her inheritance. If it was about the money, cooperating with the police investigation could lead to a compensation claim if it was discovered that my ex-wife's death was suspicious. Yet her brother not only refused to cooperate but hastily arranged her burial. What were they trying to conceal? Recalling the time I was away on a business trip, I remembered how affectionate my ex-wife was during our video calls. But upon returning home, her behavior had drastically changed. What had happened to my ex-wife? Unable to comprehend, I arranged to meet my ex-wife's mother alone. I asked her if there were any unusual incidents during the period right after my divorce. After a moment of hesitation, she took out a worn-out smartphone from her pocket. I immediately recognized it as my ex-wife's previous phone. Before I could question her, my ex-wife's mother explained that my ex-wife often laughed and cried while looking at this phone. Illiterate and unaware of its contents, my ex-wife's mother knew her brother's character very well. With her biological daughter gone, her heartache surpassed mine. Handing me the phone, she urged me not to mention this to her brother, fearing unnecessary trouble. My heart skipped a beat. Perhaps the answers I sought were within this phone. After bidding farewell to my ex-wife's mother, I turned on the phone. Unexpectedly, all the data had been erased. Rushing to an electronics store, the data in the phone was successfully recovered to about 80% after a day of troubleshooting and repair. Through my ex-wife's notes in the phone's memo, I finally discovered her long-kept secret. Three years ago when I was away on a business trip, my ex-wife, at home, was raped by her sister-in-law's brother, John. Fearing my ex-wife would report him, her sister-in-law and brother coerced her into taking a shower and destroyed all related evidence. Though my ex-wife intended to endure in silence, John seized the opportunity. He not only openly harassed her but also secretly drugged her, recording a video of the act. Subsequently, he had a firm hold over her, exploiting the situation for his gain. He not only forced her into accompanying him to parties but also engaged her in demeaning acts. However, during one party where John forced her to partake, she discovered that one individual was HIV positive. Rushing to the hospital for testing, she learned she had contracted the disease herself. Furthermore, fate played a cruel joke on her. It was around this time that my ex-wife discovered she was pregnant. 
She'd always had irregular periods, but based on the timing, that child was most likely mine. So, my ex-wife, in order not to transmit HIV to me, insisted on divorcing me, secretly took the contraindication medication, and gave birth to the child. Even during this time, John threatened her multiple times to have the child aborted, which she resisted. Later on, when John learned he had contracted HIV from my ex-wife, he sought revenge on her. This led to the package being sent using her as a messenger. Learning these unbearable truths would have worsened her already severe depressive state. After arranging her affairs and leaving no way out, she chose to end her life. The truth was finally revealed. Under the scorching sun, I felt as though I was in an ice cave. I had believed I was a good husband, but facing my ex-wife's torment, I couldn't help but feel immense pain. I hadn't protected her. Had I been more perceptive, more composed at the time? I believed that things would have turned out differently. My heart ached as if it were being pricked by millions of silver needles. I took a deep breath and made a solemn decision. I must seek revenge for my wife, comma, before taking any action, I calmed down and, accompanied by my son and parents, visited the hospital. Confirming that none of U.S. had contracted HIV, I felt a sense of relief. I also drew up a will, leaving all my assets to my son to be guarded by my parents. They were honest people who would take good care of my son. With everything in order, I investigated John's social traces. Upon learning that he frequented a local bar, I prepared a sharp fruit knife. I was determined to make him pay for my ex-wife's death, even if it meant sacrificing my own future. Inside the bar, I watched John in the center of the dance floor. He mingled with a group of rough-looking individuals, and a few beautiful girls meekly leaned against them, letting their coarse fingers roam freely. The thought that my wife may have experienced similar treatment caused my grip on the knife to tighten with each passing moment. Eventually, the pressure grew so intense that my palm felt sore. After about an hour, John got up to use the restroom, with me quietly following behind him. Watching his back, my heart pounded with anticipation. If not for this scoundrel, my ex-wife and I might still have been a perfect family, a celestial couple. But it was all because of this scoundrel, comma, my eyes bloodshot, I was consumed with hatred. Wanting to inflict a thousand cuts upon him. Just as I was preparing to strike, a woman pulled me aside. Startled, I recognized her as the woman who had flirted with me at the hotel. She wore a seductive camisole and shorts and, seeing that John hadn't noticed us, she breathed a sigh of relief. What are you planning to do? I've been watching you for a while, she asked. Alice is dead, killed by John, I whispered. The woman's face paled, but after a pause, she continued, but you shouldn't endanger yourself for scum like him, comma, my eyes blazed, showing no mercy. What do you want me to do then? Watch as my wife died unjustly? Do you know the life she led? Am I not a man for seeking revenge for her, comma, the woman let out a bitter smile? I know. I know the pain just as well. I've been deceived by John as well, and his methods are always the same comma, I hope that scumbag dies a painful death, but what can we do? Do you realize how many twisted forces are at play behind him? Even the thugs you saw are under his command. What good would killing him do? He's done countless vile deeds. Do you think death would be punishment for him? No. It would just be an escape, comma, this conversation calmed me down. I held the knife, silent. The woman clasped my hands tightly in the dim light, her eyes shimmering with tears. Alice was a good person. She had even prepared for this outcome. I just want to advise you to go back for the sake of your son. Don't squander her goodwill. Believe me, they will get what they deserve, comma, I sensed the woman's hidden message. She seemed to be gathering evidence against those scoundrels. 
I resisted any hasty actions, engaging in a lengthy conversation with the woman before wearily returning home. Back at home, my heart remained unsettled as I watched tears stream down my son's face. My conscience wouldn't let me forget my wife's death, but now wasn't the right time. I met with the woman every week, and she informed me that she had found crucial evidence against the criminals, who were soon to face legal consequences. I feared for her safety and did what I could to assist her. Finally, with the key evidence in hand, the police swiftly arrested the group of criminal offenders. I visited my wife's grave with my son and flowers, intending to share everything with her. However, upon arriving at the cemetery, I witnessed her brother wielding a hoe, smashing a tombstone. You damn woman, you infected us with HIV, he shouted. Alice, even in death, you still try to frame us, comma, her brother and sister-in-law went berserk, destroying a tombstone into pieces. I quickly called security to restrain them and informed the police, who took the pair away. I later learned that David was diagnosed with HIV during a prison medical examination. It appeared that David and his sister-in-law, despite being cousins, had an illicit relationship, indirectly infecting the brother. This, I thought, was karma.